when Henry looked at the back door, he saw a man with the longest, dirtiest hair he had ever seen in his life, and his clothes were all dirty. He was just dirty all over. And then Henry heard Dad say something because the man had asked for food. Do you have any food? And, the, and Dad said, well, we're just getting ready to eat. Why don't you come in and eat with us? Oh, Henry could not believe what he was hearing, asking that man to come in and eat. Well, so Dad opened the door, and the man saw the table and smelled the food. He started to run to the table, but Dad said, oh, you have to wash your hands first. Oh, the man didn't like that, but he went over and he washed his hands real fast, not good. And then he wiped his hands on Mom's clean towel and left real dirty streaks on it. Oh, Henry could not believe this. Oh, and he looked at Maddie, and Maddie couldn't believe it either. Her eyes were big. And he looked at Canaan, and his eyes were real big. Oh, they were not talking to each other, but their eyes were talking to each other. And so the man comes in. He runs over to the table and slides into a chair. And instead of asking for somebody to pass him food, he just got up and reached over the table into the pile of corn on the cob, and he grabbed it. And then he plopped that on his plate, and he reached right over into the hand of butter, and he grabbed a handful of butter. Oh, you should have seen Henry and Maddie and Canaan then. Oh, wow, their eyes were as big as saucers. What on earth is this person doing? Well, he rubbed that butter all over and he started eating, and he, he made a lot of noise when he ate, too. And so Henry was just, he was remembering what he had been thinking out in the garden about how he was never, ever going to comb his hair, and he was never, ever going to wash his hands. He was never, ever going to put on clean clothes. But Henry was starting to have some different thoughts. And then he looked over at Dad, and Dad was looking at him with a twinkle in his eye. And Henry happened to think, you know, I'll bet Dad is trying to teach me a lesson because I bet Dad knows what I've been thinking because Dad was a boy one time too. So when Henry went out to finish his chore in the garden, he had a whole lot different thoughts. So we're going to sing a little song. I'm glad today. I'm glad today for my mother. I'm glad today. Okay? I'm glad today. I'm glad today. For my mother. I'm glad today. Thank you, God in heaven. I'm glad today, I'm glad today for my father. I'm glad today, thank you, God in heaven. Then we're going to sing for our chores, too. I'm glad today, I'm glad today for my chores. I'm glad today, thank you. God in heaven. All righty. I hope you're glad for your mom and your dad and the chores and the rules that you have in your house. Okay, we're going to stand up, and instead of having a person say the prayer, I'm going to be the leader. I'm going to say something, and then I want all of you to be the echo, and you echo it. So you, will you stand up? We're going to do an echo prayer. <laughs> an echo prayer. Okay. All right. Remember, I'm the leader. You're following me. Okay? 
Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for mamas. mamas. Thank you for daddies. Thank you for for rules. rules. And thank you for chores. chores. And thank you for our church. church. Amen. Amen. You may go to your seats. Well, I like that children's story. How about you? Elizabeth is so creative. Now we come out to our time in the worship service that we uh, have a way of participating. All of us have been blessed in very marked manners, and so uh, we're going to give our tithes and offering. We also like to remind you there are a few ways to give. There's the box in the back. The, uh, the officers are going to come around with a plate in a few minutes, and uh, you can also give online. Uh, the work of God requires funds so we take time for this and the bible says god loves what how's that god loves what he loves a cheerful giver so i'm smiling and i'm glad that god has given me some means to share uh in in return i also got this little um uh, bookmark from jane i don't know if you've ever gotten a bookmark from jane it says smile god loves you Amen. We should be the happiest people on earth. At this time, let's bow our head and ask God to bless the means. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you now for the uh, means, the offering that we receive. We ask that it will be multiplied so that we might advance the kingdom of heaven, that we will spread the gospel in a way uh, like it's never been spread before because you bless the money. And we thank you uh, for giving us this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen this time. May the officers lift up this morning's tithes and offerings. Now I have the privilege of uh, continuing in worship at our worship time today. But before uh, we go on, I just want to remind you, we all have these uh, nice bulletins. Uh, Sister Carrico always does a, a marvelous job in putting them together. Uh, we want you to read your bulletin and be informed, okay? Just make sure you read and see what's going on. And there's a couple birthdays that are going on. There's also, too, uh, there's God's cause that is coming up. Uh, just know what's going on in your church and and as you find out about it see how you can participate in those different ministries also too I want to remind you on Tuesday night we have a board meeting beginning at 6 30 uh, did I say 6 30 it's 6 o'clock thank you for your patience <laughs> it's 6, six o'clock and we're so glad we have good help uh, we have an open board we want to encourage you to come and participate in the board you know we, we we are looking for as much help as we can and ideas. So we want to remind you of that. At this time now, as we do in this part of the worship service, we like to take time and um, take time out for prayer. But before we do, um, seems like I have a lot to say today. Uh, I came across this particular uh, article in 
Christ's object lesson, and I just want to share it with you. It says, to praise God in fullness and sincerity of heart is as much a duty as is prayer. And then it goes on to say, uh, is speaking about praise, is these exercises drive back the power of Satan. They expel the spirit of murmuring and complaining, and the tempter loses ground. And when I read that, I said, hallelujah. Amen. I want to gain ground against the enemy. And so people say, well, why do you, why do you like this? I believe in praising God. I'm one of those, man. I just... You all don't know what I'm doing to hold myself back. A lot of times I like to just run through this. I've never been Pentecostal, but I can feel what they feel sometimes, you know. But at this time, we want to come and we want to invite you to come down and we want to pray and ask God to, to help us to learn how to praise God more in our lives. We live in a, a very difficult society. As you come down, you can come forward now. We need more and more of Jesus to learn more about him. When, we, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against. That's the Word of God. We need to learn how to get the Word of God in our mind and stand on those promises, folks. Uh, right now, we, we think about the difficulties. There was an earthquake in, um, in California and difficulties in different, different places. The rent is due. The mortgage is due. It's hot outside. I mean, we need to pray about all of those things. The children won't be quiet in church, you know. <laughs> All those things that, that, that bother us, people cutting us off in traffic, we need to learn how to pray about everything, amen? amen. And complain about nothing. Give yeah, glory to God, hallelujah, amen? amen? Don't be afraid to say hallelujah in the church of the living God. And the good news is this, is that all of us, we're one Sabbath closer to the coming of our Lord, amen? amen. That ought to make you want to get up out your seat and say hallelujah too, because Jesus is coming again soon, Amen? That is good news. That's good news that we cannot refute or deny. And everybody knows that whether you believe in God or not, you know something has happened. And we who believe in the word of God and in Jesus Christ and in his promises, we believe it's the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So at, least at this time, let us reverently kneel and ask God to keep us, for we cannot depend and keep ourselves. So right now, our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we come. And we present ourselves to you afresh, Lord. We are so thankful for the Sabbath day. We've been working all week long, Lord. It's been hot out there, raining, and all kinds of problems. Mosquitoes and chickens and all other kind of things are bothering us, Lord. And we finally made it to the Sabbath, a time where we can come and rest, put away all of our labors, Lord, and to meet with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He has promised to meet with his people. He said he blessed the Sabbath day and he held it. He's also said, and we've been, we're honoring him in this, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. And so, Lord, we've come today and we, we, call, we cry out to thee. This poor man cried, Lord Jesus, come to near to us. Come near to us. May we feel your presence in, as we've never felt it before. And as we think about what, is, what lies ahead, we want to lift up the pastor in a very special way. As you met with him, and you've given him a word from on high, that we might see Jesus as we've never seen him before. Oh, Father in heaven, help our belief. God, help our unbelief. We find it so easy not to believe the word of God. Help us, Lord. We fall short in so many ways, Lord. We need you. We need more of your presence in our lives. And so today we come corporately and individually, Lord, asking afresh, Father, in the name of Jesus, please come near to us. Make a difference in our lives, Lord. There are those who are not, they're here, they're not, they don't want to be here, but they're here. I've seen them, you know who they are. Touch them right now, God, touch them. Let them know that there is a God who rules in the affairs of men and women and he desires their good. You said in your word, I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Oh, Father in heaven, come near to your people. Visit us here on this street, in this place, in this sanctuary. And throughout the day, Lord, renew us. Read it. 
renew us. May the Spirit of God fall afresh upon us that we might know that there is a God who wants to save us eternally. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's people said, Amen, Amen and glory to God. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Breaking of the day. It is a blessing to be here today and I'm so glad that you've joined us to worship. We're going to be having a time of dedication. If I could have all our ministry leaders, if you're involved in ministry at any level, if your name has been on the readings for Sabbath school, whatever it may be in this church, we're going to have a time of dedication, um, compassion, coordinator, any, any ministry leader within our church, and um, we're wanting you to come forward. We're going to have a time of dedication and consecration. Um, in the scriptures, we see where they did this, all the deacons, deaconesses. Um, we believe God wants us to go to a different level, being able to be rightly trained. And so if you just um, press in together, um, I want to have a special prayer of dedication. So just, if you could just place your shoulder, your hands on someone's shoulder, um, and just just join together in prayer. You could join with me also as we pray a prayer of dedication for our team. Father in heaven, we know it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that we can accomplish the work that you've given to us. Lord, we, we thank you for our team. We vary. It is a beautiful garden. We have 
um, various flowers that are arrayed in this bouquet. Lord, but we thank you that you are the one who arranged each person for such a time as this. You're the one who gives the life that each person needs in reflecting Jesus. Lord, we pray for a special anointing upon us that we may share the love of Jesus, that we will be anointed, that we would be, um, we will forgive each other, we would unite together with you. But most of all, Lord, we plead for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much, and you may go back to your seats. For our stand and shout time, I have some bad news. But why are we standing and shouting? Well, it's bad news because we're going to be losing the Snow family. Um, they're going to California. And so if I could have Brother Snow and Aries come on up, we're just going to have a special time just to pray for them um, as they move out west. Um, we know that God has given to us this wonderful family. Um, we're so thankful for how God has led them. Um, and so we're so appreciative of how we've seen Aries, his growth, and how God has lead, led also in his life. Um, Caleb, I don't know if you wanted to say something. You, you want to support? Yeah, I don't know if you, anyone wanted to say something. We, we're very appreciative. You come on up if you want. Uh, our teachers that have been there, I saw Debbie earlier. She uh, mentioned, I don't know where she is. Um, okay, if you come on up. Um, she has been instrumental in working and these ladies um, also have been instrumental in working with Aries in, in his adventures class and in Sabbath school. Um, so we're thankful for you all, for your life. Um, we'll continue praying for you. And, and I remember when I was a missionary in the Philippines, they say, you never say goodbye. You always say, see you later. Amen. Come on up, Debbie, if we could just have special prayer. Father, we thank you for the Snow family. We thank you for how you've led their lives. And Lord, we, we think about that wonderful, wonderful blessing. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, we've been talking about the power of God's word. And so uh, there is great power in the word of God. Um, and I, I have seen this to be very, very uh, much of evidence in, in the lives of people I have been mentored by. Um, and each of us, we could have that. And so before you leave, um, there are these little bookmarkers. We want you to take as many resources. Each, each day you could follow up. And there, there are a number of apps. There is version. There are a number of apps. Um, just laying up the Word of God. You could play it in your car. You could play it while you're working out. Um, just want to encourage us um, to just spend time in the, the Word of God. And God has great things that He has planned for us. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Praise the Lord. You know what? We have two mighty arms of the everlasting gospel. And you know who's holding up the everlasting gospel? The everlasting arms of Jesus. Amen. I would you like for you to join me on the second verse. Hymn 469. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, come on. Leaning, safe and secure, 
Everlasting arms. The blessing of being in God's presence. The Bible says there is fullness of joy when we're in God's presence. And I just want to encourage you um, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, he says, acknowledge him, and he will do what? He will direct our path. So we could lean. We could really lean on the everlasting arms. If we would just pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, we are thankful. We are grateful for the word, for the spirit for the anointing that you have promised. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us now as we open your word. And we thank you for Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you for the victory that we could have in him and through him. And we praise you and thank you, Lord, for you being gracious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In your sermon notes, you see there is a bird on the front until we get our pictures up. But just a couple weeks ago, when my wife was getting ready to preach here last week, I took the kids, we went to the zoo. And so we were walking, and Canaan is the person, he likes to read the maps, and he tells us where to go. And so he wanted to go left to see the, the elephants, and we made our way around. It was a very hot Friday. Shiloh was in the little stroller, and we just went about and just had a great time. We had lunch together, and we're coming towards the end, and as we're going through the various exhibits, there was a bird that caught my attention. And so I went over and read the placard there, and it said, Southern Screamer. And they were beginning to make a little noise, but I'm sure they were just on volume number one of a thousand. So I read, and it said, the Southern Screamers, it's in your sermon notes. They are the guard birds. Sermon notes. If you need a sermon note, just raise your hand and we'll get one to you. 
guard birds. It says the southern screamer, they're guard birds of the, their habitat. They're primarily in South America. They're, what kind of call it says? Trumpet-like calls. Trumpet. A trumpet is loud. Their trumpet-like calls can carry for several miles. But what do these birds make a lot of noise about? They make this trumpet-like sound to warn other birds and other wildlife of impending or approaching danger. This is the animal kingdom. And they do this, and they're called southern screamers. Is there a message in the books of the Bible that God says you got to be southern screamers? Is there a message in the Bible? It's there in the scriptures. And by the way, Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12, and there's a threefold blessing. The Bible says, blessed are those who read, blessed are those who hear. And actually, in the original language, it says, blessed are those who read, in chapter 1, it means to read out loud. Blessed are those who read, those who hear the words of this prophecy, and those who keep those things which are written therein. And it says, because the time is at hand. All right, so we're going to be southern screamers in learning today about this wonderful message. It is a message that tells us that Jesus wins. It is a message that tells us the other side, Satan, lost. It is a message that tells us, choose the winning side. You hear that? Three things. Real simple. It is a message that tells us that who wins? Jesus wins. The other side, Satan lost. And then it says, choose the winning side. Father in heaven, we know your word is quick and powerful. As we read, may it take deep root in our hearts. We're weak human beings in need of divine strength. So guide us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read it together. Chapter 14, 6 to 12, reading together. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great, the, who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in its image and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured out full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night. These worshipers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of its name. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. The very last verse, verse 2, is a DNA test. Did everyone get it? It is a DNA test to see who do we truly worship. Who is our Father? In verse 7, I'm giving broad strokes. In verse 7, it gives us another DNA test. Do you see what it says? Fear God. And so there are many gods in this world. There are so many voices saying, this is how God says we should live. There are many voices saying, this is how we worship. But it says, fear God and give glory to Him because the hour of His judgment has come. And then it says, worship Him. Here's a DNA test. It is the seal of God. It says, worship Him who, does, who did what? Made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This very DNA is found in Exodus chapter 20 when it talks about the Sabbath. 
He made the heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. It's right there in the fourth commandment showing God's DNA. Because there are lots of counterfeit. So this message is calling us to true worship. What it's saying is there are so many different insights of how to worship. And so many different things of what to do. But the southern screamers will call people. Remember I said basically three things we're talking about here. That if I were to just distill it all, it all is compacted in one package. Jesus what? Jesus wins. The other side or Satan lost. And it says choose the winning side. Choose the winning side. And so as we're looking at these various things, I want us to think about what God is desiring us to do. What God is desiring us to do. I don't see all my sermon notes or slides, but it's fine. We'll just move on. I want to direct your attention to one key word in chapter 14, verse 6. And it starts with a G. Does anyone see a word? Start with the letter G. Gospel. Gospel. It is in the Greek, euangelion. It is the good news. So God is in His mercy giving earth one last final call. It is not a message for religious entities. Does everyone get that? Because the message says to every, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel or eternal gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And then just in case people may say, well, that's for such and such religion or that's for the Jews or that's for this group of people or that's for that group. Uh uh-uh. It starts to break it all down to every nation, kindred, tongue, language and people. This is a global message. It will be spoken in every dialect. It will be given to every mankind and saying, call mankind to worship the true God. Everyone will get this message. And here's something. You may be thinking, how in the world will everyone on this earth get this message? 40% of Muslims are converted in dreams, what they received the night before. How do I know this? You can find out about this. Plus, the Bible tells us in Job about dreams and visions. God says in His Word, in Joel and in Acts, I will pour out My Spirit upon just a certain group of people. All flesh. God is pouring out His Spirit. Do you realize there is this call and it's building, it's getting louder, 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 louder. And it is saying, listen, Let's be honest. We as Seventh-day Adventists have not proclaimed the message how God gave us to be proclaimed. Is everyone with me? We have to be honest. We have to be honest that just like the Jews who were given so much information about how to live, how to have longevity by eating certain things, how to treat your neighbor, how to forgive, how to be a just person in dealing with business transactions. We've been given so much. But just like the Jews of old, we have become exclusive rather than inclusive, including all humanity. So God is saying, I'm giving it a final movement here where we will get the message right because look, it says here, Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? If we're not giving this southern screaming message saying Jesus won, the central focus of the message is not the mark of the beast. The central focus of the message is not 666. The central focus of the message is not saying this person does this or this person. The central focus of the message is Jesus, the Lamb of God. And God says, man, we missed it. We missed it. But God is gracious. And He says, we need to give the trumpet a certain sound. The Gospel, the good news of salvation. It is a good news. 
How do I know this? Because the three angels' messages, they're summarized really, really simple. Remember, who won? Jesus wins. That's the everlasting gospel. And if you were to unpack it, if you got a container and you say, this is the container Jesus gave us, but then you got to open it and say, okay, let's see what this message is about. Oh, I can be forgiven of my sins. Okay, what else is in that message? The everlasting gospel, euangelion. Oh, I can live eternally by what Jesus' merits, not mine. Okay, what is the other good news? All my sins are forgiven by the blood of the Lamb. What? What's the other good news? I am saved by grace through faith and not of yourself, lest any man should boast. Oh, man. What other good news? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Though you die, you will live forever. What? What's the good news? It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, I will not send the Comforter. But if I go, I will give you a Comforter, the one who comes alongside, the Holy Spirit. Why is it good news? Because it says it leads us into all truth. Why is it good news? It will convict us of sin and of righteousness. Michael, that is messed up. You need to ask for forgiveness. You should not have said that. You should ask for forgiveness. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And so that is the good news. So there are things we're talking about. The Gospel. Jesus wins. Is that good news? The other team lost. The third of the angels fallen. But he says choose the winning team. We're going to be unpacking more of this because we're going to do a series when we come back from camp meeting, but I want us to know about the Southern Screamer. God wants us to know these very important things, these key components in this message. It's amazing because these three angels' messages on your screen, I found this a number of years ago. It's old and tattered. I was going through my mom's bookshelf there, and I found sermon notes. You see the year? 1981. When I was a child, my dad would check our sermon notes at the end of service. Thank you, Dad. As a child, you're like, why do I have to write? Thank you, Dad. Remember what Elizabeth was saying? Thank you for your little message there. Here it is. Tattered. Torn. The message hasn't changed. You see what the message was? It says in Revelation chapter 4, 6, and 7, that's what we're reading today. You see what it says in Malachi that God is going to pour out His Spirit. He's talking about He's going to send Elijah the prophet through the Spirit and power of Elijah to finish the message. It will be a message of calling men and women back to their true Creator. It says, I don't care what your church preaches. What does it say in the Word of God? I don't care how popular your church is by the thousands. What does it say in the Word of God? I don't care how many people are in the parking lot and how popular the pastor is. What does it say in the Word of God? And God is calling men and women to search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of Me. It is a message. You don't have it on your screen, but the song they sang that day was 354. It was in the Old Immortal. It was, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. God is calling us back to take a stand. So the message is, Jesus who? Jesus wins. The other side lost. Choose the winning side. Choose the winning side. There are lots. We're just focused in on verse 6. We're just zeroed in on the Gospel. We're just zeroed in on this message of hope. In your quotes, it says, for years, the church has been looking to man and expecting much from man. 
but not looking to Jesus, in whom our hopes of eternal life are centered. Therefore, God gave to his servants a testimony that presented the truth as it is in Jesus, which is the third angel's message in clear, distinct lines. Jesus wins. That's the gospel, the good news. The other side lost. Choose the winning side. Amen? God has done such great things because you see, it all goes back to when we look at Calvary's cross and that is why He wants us to spend a thoughtful hour each day. How do you do it then, Lord? If I want to know about Jesus wins, how do you know it? The Bible says in John 5.39, search the Scriptures. Jesus said, for in them you think you have eternal life. He was talking to the well Verse, well-studied Jews. They memorized the first five books of the Bible. Jesus says, you search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So you could read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you will see a common theme, and it is Jesus wins. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus wins all throughout. This message that John was given, it calls us back to stand on the side of truth. God is saying you and I need to share the gospel, the good news. You see, it is unnatural for someone to keep the good news, the gospel about Jesus, is sacrificial death. Uh, the forgiveness, His grace, His power to redeem, His high priestly ministry, His intercessory mis ministry, His power over death, His soon coming. It's, it's impossible to keep it a secret. Those who are filled with the love of Christ will not do so. The southern screamers, you're probably thinking, well, this is only in nature that they do this and they warn of impending doom. You know, there's an impending doom because they're friends. There is something that is coming and God is preparing us for it. You probably remember it. It was in 2004. I remember it because I was in Florida visiting my parents. It was a day after Christmas. It was on December 26, 2004, when over 150,000 people perished when the tsunami hit more than 12 countries and regions in Asia. There was a lady, a Bangkok movie star, an amateur photographer, her name is Owen, and she was there on that very day, on December 26. She was taking pictures, and she was particularly capturing a village, the group of people, they're nomads, they wander back and forth all across the ocean. The Mokin village life. And she was just mem mesmerizing how they, they put together their boats, how they prepare for going out to sea, how they learn to swim before they could walk. But what really got her attention in her pictures, it showed the Moken people on the beach crying because she was taking pictures of them, had no idea there was an impending doom. And she was taking pictures, and these Moken, this tribal group, they were on the beach crying. She had no idea why they were crying. She later says, I guess they knew something bad was going to happen. But here's what this group, this tribe, the sea was acting strangely because they, were, they passed us on generation to generation. If the water, if the ocean recedes um, quickly, then you know a tsunami is coming. They, they passed us on generationally, generation. And so they knew this. On the mainland, elephants were stampeding towards higher ground. Off the Thailand coast, divers noticed dozens of dolphins swimming for deeper water. On the island, get this, the cicadas, you know they're noisy, they make a lot of noise. The cicadas went completely silent. 
Noise. Silence. A spear fisherman who was from a different part of the island noticed the silence and ran and became a southern screamer. Ran and gave the warning to his tribe. Go to higher ground in their language. This photographer was watching all of this. In Sri Lanka, before the giant waves slammed into Sri Lanka and India, the coastlines, they saw domestic animals. Animals, I said already, elephants. Dogs refused to go outdoors. The flamingos abandoned their low-lying breeding areas and they were breeding at that time of the year. They went to higher ground and they said only few animals perished. They heeded the warning. Only few from this tribe, the Moken village, only few from, not the Moken village, only few from the animals rather perished. None from the Mokin tribe perished. Zero. Because they gave the warning and they went to higher ground. Dear friends, there is a call because God is saying to you and I, business as usual, no way. Church, just going through the motions, no way. Giving 99% to God, He says, you won't make it. Backbiting and gossiping, he says, doom forever. But only those who partner with the divine power from heaven, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, will be saved. The Bible says, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame, and now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I want to be a southern screamer and warn mankind of the impending doom. Warn about what? Tell them, choose Christ. He says, choose Jesus. He won at Calvary's cross. He's just waiting for you and I to be on the winning team. Are we waiting for victory? For No, no. Paul says, thanks be to God which gives us the victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. He already won at Calvary. And now he is waiting for humanity to make a choice. He's waiting for all nations, all kindred, all tongue, all people. God is about to move in supersonic speed. And if we are not on board, it's moving. The train is moving. The train is moving. Before we make our choices, God is saying in Psalm chapter 46, God is our, you probably know it, our what? Refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, there is coming upon the world a time of trouble. You think I am reading that? Just from my own words, God is saying, I'm giving to humanity the good news to choose now. He says, choose now, choose life. Why would you die? In Daniel chapter 12, the companion book that goes with Revelation, Daniel unlocks Revelation. The last chapter in the, book of, the prophetic book of Revelation, it says, at that time, Michael shall stand, Jesus, the great prince, who has charge of his people. The word of God says, and there shall be a time of trouble. It is future. You think the times are tough now? That is why the word of God says, if the footmen have wearied you, if you're tired with the little trials that we have now, he says, what will you, be, what will you do with the running of horses? If you and I can't keep up with little skirmishes and challenges, he says, what will you do if in the time of peace and wherein you trusted, what will you do when Jordan River swells its banks? 
So God is saying, only in the ark of safety can you make it through. The Bible says, and it's not to scare anyone, it is to prepare because God loves us. He says, I won, but I want you to choose the winning side. He says, there will be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation until this time. Wait, you mean to tell me there will be a time more difficult than all the persecutions the Jews went through? He says, yes. Then all that the Israelites went through in Egypt? Yes. But God's people can have immunity with the blood of Jesus. God's people can have peace in the midst of the storm. God's people can have assurance that even if I die, I remember the good news and I read that euangelion, the gospel, though you die, you will live forever because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. When the devil says, well, Michael, you messed up here, I am forgiven. Hallelujah. Well, you did this yesterday. Well, today I am born again through the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, that is, over, that is how I overcome the devil. That is how you overcome four options you have. First, it says, I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. It says, God says, all or nothing. You have to evaluate your life. Have you been giving your all to Jesus? Only you know. It's between you and God. And you could pray this prayer, Lord, show me if I have not been giving you my all. He will spell it out clear. Then it says in number two, you could check it off on the box on your connection card. Worship God by giving myself totally to Him. That is what the worship is about. I'm giving my all to you. I'm not divided in my mind. I'm, I'm surrendering my will to you. And number three says, I will be faithful, a faithful steward. It's a manager. You are a manager. God says, I've given to you these things. Your time. You said, I'll be faithful in my time. The Sabbath is a sacred time. I'm giving you my time. I will visit the sick. I will help those in need. I will bless those who are in great, great difficulties. Your time, your talent, your tithe, five T's, your testimony, your temple, your bodies. I will not do anything to defile my body. And fourth, I will share the gospel, the good news, the euangelion. I will be a southern screamer. Can't keep it quiet. About Jesus in word and action. As we sing our closing song, I want us to just think about again what God has done. We focus on just verse 6. The euangelion. And we know Jesus is coming again, but we focus on that one very point about the good news. Jesus wins. The other side lost. Choose the win inside. And God says, I will do a great thing if you surrender your life to him. Please stand as we sing our closing song, Jesus is Coming Again. the trumpet and loud let it ring Jesus is coming again cheer up ye pilgrims be joyful and sing Jesus is coming again coming again coming again Jesus is coming
Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the grace of God. None of us are deserving of all that you do, but because of your great love, God is love. Lord, we thank you that we can have eternal life through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. And so we're looking to you, praying and asking for forgiveness of everything that we have committed that have separated us from you. Lord, we thank you for that amazing promise that he who has begun a good work in you, in me, will so complete it unto the day of his coming. Lord, we thank you that you said in your word, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power. We thank you. We bless your name for what you have done for the good news. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So happy that you are here. May God richly bless you. You could join us for lunch and have a wonderful day. If you want resources,